All right, here's the uh, full triple H bridged uh, control circuit for our wheelchair lift. Uh, all right, so uh, we basically have here <laughs> uh, four four circuit boards that are, are controlling this mechanism. Three on the bottom are H bridges. Uh, they control each one of these motors individually. Uh, this top uh, let's see, this bottom one controls this one. Uh, this one, these two control these other two. Uh, these will be on the sides of the mechanism. This one will be on the top of the mechanism. Uh, the top board here is the motherboard, and it is controlling these three boards below right now. It's not operational because I don't have all the software done. But the software, essentially, this is this is that motherboard, uh, all on the breadboards here. So. Uh, Let's see here. So this blue guy here is our limit switches, and here's the uh, signal filtering uh, circuit tree. And that on here is these guys and that. Uh, and then we have our four input buttons from the user, and those are right here, and they're uh, filtering circuitry. And that is this stuff right here. Uh, in addition to this circuit over here, I have a radio control module, and that's this guy right here. Uh, that takes radio signal from here, and I can uh, turn on that LED, and eventually all these circuits uh, or all these signals go uh, through these transistors, which will allow the uh, pins on this uh, the main motherboard or mother uh, microcontroller to drop down to ground, which would signal a button press. Um, so. Uh, that, that allows us to do uh, this wirelessly, which is pretty cool. Um, so, all right, uh, what happens here is uh, we have this guy is the main microcontroller. Uh, it's kind of control, it's just, uh, it's doing pretty much everything. Uh, and so that guy will be right here. Uh, it it sends the signals to each one of the H bridges. Um, it takes the input from the user and from the radio control, which is essentially the same pin. And then it uh, it takes that signals or it takes those signals and uh, it does stuff with them. And what uh, this other guy is doing, I don't have enough pins on this one to actually do the whole operation. So what we had to do is we had to introduce another microcontroller. And this guy literally just watches the switches and when something happens or when it gets asked from this motherboard uh, when it gets asked it will uh, if it gets asked to do something or if uh, these change toggle position it sends a information byte or actually they communicate uh, more intricately uh, they communicate with each other and uh, I'll show you that on the oscilloscope here in a second uh, they talk to each other and say Hey, this or it'll listen to these guys and say, "Hey, something has changed," and here's what it, it changed to. And this guy does stuff with it. Um, in addition, when the user pushes a button, the first thing this guy does is send a signal or sends a byte information byte. It queries this guy for these switch informations or the switch information. And when it does that, uh, it reads those and then allows certain things to happen on here. Because basically, we don't want the wheelchair lift to go the wrong way or break the mechanism so it needs to check that with limit switches uh, eventually I would like to have uh, rotary encoders to actually sense the position of these uh, motors uh, down to like a well, let's see a thousandth of a, a of a revolution uh, but those are expensive and the company didn't get back to me in time uh, uh, so what happens is uh, so now, now we just have uh, resolution on the ends of this thing, and that's why we kind of have to use stepper motors because we have no rotor encoders to actually see where we are. So we have to descend discrete steps to the stepper motors and hope that it gets there. And hopefully uh, these limit switches at the end of the tracks will allow us to know our home, home and end of the cycle. Uh, so what happens between these two is we'll have uh, an oscilloscope channel, or yellow one. Yellow will be... Uh, the switch controller and blue will be the uh, motherboard or I guess the main main microcontroller 
And so right now I have the H bridges off. They're not being powered. Uh, so this isn't going to actually do anything with the motors, but you can see on the uh, on the screen here on the oscilloscope what's happening. Um, okay, so what happened here is let's see here. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, let's do that again. Hold on. Okay, so what happened here is uh, when I push that button. This chip registered it and said, okay, the user wants to do something, um, but let's check and see what we can actually do first before we actually do anything. So what, that's what this blue byte is. So what it does is it sends uh, a predetermined uh, byte uh, serially, or yeah, serially over UART, I guess, to this controller. This controller, he reads that information. That's what this time delay is right there. It's reading it. And then it says, okay, actually it's reading it, determining what this is, because this could be anything, because there's several different commands. And then it reads that, chooses what to do with it, and it turns out this means send me the information on the switches. And that's what happens here. This guy is kind of like a, uh, uh, kind of like a doorbell. So this is a, also a predetermined code which this guy which uh, so this is a predetermined code inside this guy and this guy and what happens is when uh, this microcontroller sees this it knows that the next thing is going to be the switch information which is this so this is the doorbell and this is the actual information and these things have different signals that they're sending so we have to have like a doorbell guy saying or it's kind of like an address it's an address is what it is so it says uh, this information is associated with this uh, with this uh, what we're trying to do, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, so this is this is what this is the uh, positions of these switches right here. So these guys, I don't know if you can see, some of them are on and some are off. There, that's a better shot. So that is associated with that right here. And what happens next is. Uh, this time delay here is this microcontroller uh, decoding that information, or yeah, kind of taking the information apart, uh, figuring out what it means, uh, figuring out what it's actually capable of doing, and then it replies back with this. And this is an exact copy of this. And what happens is this microcontroller reads that information and says, "Okay, uh, this is what the this is what the other microcontroller thought I said." And here's what I actually said. If this doesn't match this, then there's a serious problem and we need to resend the information. So what it does is it, it uh, if this information was incorrect, it would send this whole information again. And, this, and then the, uh, it would resend this until it got it right. And once it has it right, then it's able to do other code. So really this is like a handshake between the two controllers, making sure the information is correct and there's no uh, errors in the transmission. And once, once, uh, once this is over with, they know uh, what they can do uh, from then, therefore, uh, then on. And uh, so let's uh, let's actually see this baby run. Okay, so we got booted up, the, booted up the micro, or booted up the uh, H bridges, and uh, these guys are ready to go. Uh, we're gonna push one of these buttons, and I think it's well, I think it's this one. It shouldn't do anything. Nope, it does. Okay, so that was okay. The limit switches are in the correct position for there to be motion. Uh, I forget which button I pushed, actually. So these two these two, two motors are running on different frequency than this, so we have different torques and different RPMs. Uh, so the fan is automatic, too. Uh, that's also sent uh, over the transmission lines. Uh, basically, it, it turns on the fan when it's okay to run something and then it turns it off after a delay. Uh, okay, let's try this other button. Is this the one I pushed? No, yeah, it's the one I pushed. Next time. <laughs> Next time I'll push this one. So it's gonna run through the cycle again. The fan boots up right as we go and then uh, if you notice, as soon as everything's done, uh, there's about a five second delay and the fan shuts off. Oh, let's see here. So that's gonna be on here. 
as soon as it goes, you'll hear a click. There it is. So this is the, basically, that's an uncritical command, and this guy just, he just sends it and doesn't care if it actually gets heard. I mean, if the fan's on, it's on as of now. We'll, uh, we'll uh, implement error code later, anyway. Uh, so everything's off, now let's try this, uh, this lower button. And those limit switches are still in the same position. And if you noticed, I think those were spinning clockwise. So let's, uh, let's push it again, nothing. It means that the limit switches, or it means that the mechanism, uh, the virtual mechanism is in a position that it does not like, and it will not actually allow that command to happen. It's still, uh, it's still uh, understood it perfectly fine, but it just doesn't allow anything to happen. So you can see it's it's getting the information every time, but it just won't let it happen. Now let's, uh, let's change the position of these switches. Essentially this is emulating the wheelchair sliding on the entire mechanism and being in the bottom position. So it actually, it waited for the, well, it shouldn't have actually done that off to uh, take that out of the code. Um, it was actually waiting it was waiting for the, that to be true, and it shouldn't do that. Anyway, I'll uh, I'll try that again. So now the top button shouldn't do anything, and it's not. Uh, now let's try the bottom button, and it should spin the other way. Yep. So, fans on. Everything's spinning. So that's that's basically the whole cycle. Uh, there's two other buttons on the radio and two other buttons that allow you manual control because uh, these cycles don't actually work unless the wheelchair knows where it is because we don't want to, like, if the wheelchair starts up, if the power gets turned on, the wheelchair, or if, like, power's lost mid-cycle somehow, we don't want the wheelchair to, like, we don't want these cycles to be able to run unless it knows where it is. So, uh... That was 12 minutes, and our presentation was only allowed to be 30, and I could talk another half hour about this. Anyway, uh, that's, that's all we got right now.